Hello guys! In the previous video we looked at how to connect API built in Node.js and Express and deployed on Lambda function to HTTP and REST API gateways. Today we will look at how to use JWT authorizer with HTTP API gateway. For that we will need a JSON web token. And the best place to get JSON web token in AWS is Cognito. Uh, before we start though, let's take a look at two routes we added to the application. So right here we added posts route and we simply installed Axios, and now we are proxy uh, the call to JSON play, placeholder, posts, endpoint, right? And we return the exact data that we receive. In the next one, we have posts, and we have a post ID as a parameter. Again, the same thing. We're just proxying uh, those requests to JSON placeholder endpoint to get the post ID. So right now, let's go ahead and test those routes. Let's put yarn dev. All right, let's try getting posts. And we receive the list of the posts from JSON placeholder. And now let's try to get a post uh, with ID of three. And now we got the post that has ID of three. So our code seems to be working. Now let's jump into AWS to create Cognito user pool, right? So we click on a create user pool and we're gonna be using Cognito user pool. We would like to sign in option with an email right here. However, you can choose also username or phone number. So the next page, we're going to use the Cognito default password. Uh, Multi-factor authentication, we're going to disable it because it's just a demo um, user pool. In production, obviously, you would want to have a multi-factor authentication. Okay, in a user account recovery, we can go email only, right? So click on the next button here. Uh, Self-service sign up. So we're going to leave it. So we need to create a user so we can uh, sign up. So now allow Cognito automatically send messages and verify to confirm. We want to use email messages, right? Uh, verifying attribute changes. So we leave it as is. We also have email. So they're required attributes, right? You can select some of them that they're required, but for now we'll just leave it as is. We click next. Now it says send email with Amazon says. Uh, it's recommended when you go to production. Now we're just going to play around so we can just select send email with a Cognito. So that's the limit of uh, 50 emails per day. Okay, so we now going to click next, just leave email address as is. All right, user pool name, we can call it a demo user pool. Initial app client, so we're going to also create a client. And uh, we'll just leave it as a public client and we'll call it demo user client generate client secret no we don't want to generate client secret right so then we're going to click next again and it's going to let us review our choices and we're going to go and uh, scroll down it's going to give you attributes and all so but we're going to just click create user pool all right so now we need to click into the user pool and first we're going to go to app integrations and in the actions, we're going to create a Cognito domain, right? We can also create a custom Cognito domain. So when users are redirected to sign in or log in or sign up, you're going to have a custom your company's domain. But here, for these purposes, we'll just need to create a Cognito basic domain. So we're going to put maybe demo. All right, we're going to put demo Cognito that is available. So let's create a Cognito domain. And here we want to go to demo user pool client, the client we created earlier. It will allow us to get a, a JWT token. So we can click here on our app client. Let's go and we actually need to add allow user password authentication. So we're going to use it to get the token. Also in a hosted UI that we're going to be doing. So we need to add a callback URL and you can just put localhost 3000. For our purposes, it doesn't matter, but uh, when you're going to be doing developing, you want to put a valid callback URL, right? So now, right here, we need to select identity provider, and it's going to be Cognito user pool. Uh, right here, the grant types, we want to select implicit grant, authorization grant, right? And here we can uh, see that implicit grant exposes the token in the URL. Obviously, it's not secure, but since we need to get that token and we don't really want to create the whole application, we actually want to have a token in the URL, right? And then with the scopes, you can just select the open ID scope and, you know, it will allow you to get phone, email, right? We can just select email, for example, profile, and then 
uh, AWS Cognito admin, right? So, but this is really doesn't matter. Yeah, all we care that we have that implicit grant so we can uh, grab our token from the URL. So let's click Save Changes. So App Client has been updated and now we have a button available view hosted UI. Let's go ahead and click on that button. The sign up, we, the sign in uh, form. So, right, we want to actually sign up. So we can click on the sign up and now let's look right here in the browser we need to change the response type not to be code because when you do response type as a code it will do the authentication token um code and token authentication behind the scenes so it's basically going to send us to our uh callback url which we don't want so we want to put type as a token and then we're going to click enter so it refreshes and saves it, right? Just make sure it's token in here. And now you can enter email and the password. After that, you're going to receive uh, the email notification with a code that you need to put in uh, to verify your email. So you need to enter a valid email. Let me go ahead and enter the valid email and let me go ahead and paste it in here. All right. And now I can click confirm account. So my account is confirmed, right? Now, it seems like nothing happened, but really, since we told uh, Cognito to allow to get token in the URL, we actually received the tokens right here. So we need to copy the token and now we're going to open a new window and then we're going to paste the URL. And uh, right here, we can see that we get an ID token, right? And we also have the access token, right? And that's where access token starts, right? And let's go ahead and inspect the access token, right? So we're going to copy this and we're going to be using access token for authentication, so just go ahead and copy. So let's go ahead to jwt.io, and now we're gonna paste the token. Okay, right here, we can see a few properties, right? We can see the scopes that we created. The name of the token is access. Um, sub is usually your user ID in a cognito, but what we're interested in for authentication, we'll need this issuer, and we also will need this client ID, right? So let's go ahead now and uh, work with the routes in HTTP gateway. All right, we're in an API gateway of AWS and I already created an HTTP API gateway. Let's go ahead and click on it, right? And we don't have any routes yet. So when I created, I didn't create routes, but let's go ahead and create some routes here, All right? So method any, and we know we have a routes that are called, it's called health Z, right? Let's create one. The next route we're gonna create is message and then we need to do proxy plus, right? So it's gonna get all the messages here, right? So message one, message hello, whatever we want, let's create that. Uh, let's create a couple more routes. One will be posts. And the next one will be posts and also proxy, right? because we, again, we'll need post one, post two, post three, right? So now we created all those routes, right? So now we click and it's gonna ask us to create and attach integration. So we're gonna create integration. This is for the route, right? And we're gonna choose Lambda function and we're gonna choose the Lambda function right here, right? The Lambda API service that we already have. So let's click create. And now the health route has the integration, right? Now we want to have message proxy routes to have integration, and we can technically choose the same integration because it's the same Lambda. However, you may want to have a different integration, right? Uh, maybe it's going to be a different Lambda function or maybe a different service, right? So, but in our case, we only have one Lambda, so we're going to attach it, uh, this integration to all other uh, routes, right? But technically, this can be messages, can be your order service, for example, posts can be your uh, product service, right? Let's go back to the API gateway. Click on the link for the service. So let's try health Z. Let's hit enter. And in a little bit, right, Lambda spun up and it gives us environment, right? So now we want to have a message world, right? And it's going to return hello world to us. And finally, let's check the, the posts integration, right? If we want to get posts, and it's going to give us the list of the posts, as you can see. And then if we want to have post number five, for example, right, we can get the post with ID of five. So everything seems to be working. So now we can go back to uh, API Gateway and work on the authorization, right? Right here, we have authorization. 
right? And let's say we want to protect our posts routes, right? Because we don't, we're using some API, maybe uh, we are paying some money and we want to charge our users some, some money. So we don't want to expose it to people who are not logged in, right? So let's go ahead and uh, create an attach authorizer. And there are two choices. One is the Lambda, right? Lambda kind of straightforward. You attach Lambda and the Lambda should return a Boolean value, right? Or IAM policy, the Boolean value is easier, true or false, right? It returns true, then user is authorized if not it's false, but we're interested in JWT token because, you know, it's going to be a little uh, easier to integrate because it's out of the box, right? We already created Cognito and we got the token. So let's call our authorizer and the API authorizer, right? And authorize the request will be in the header authorization and also issue a URL, right? As you remember, we opened the JSON web token, right? So let's go again to the jwt.io and uh, grab uh, the issuer URL. And the issuer URL is right here, ISS. So let's go grab it and we can paste it in. So now we need to put audience, right? Because we won't be able to create our authorizer without the audience, right? Add audience and usually this value will be in the A UD property, right? But if we look at the JSON web token, we don't have a UD, right? But we also can take the client. Usually this is an access token, so it doesn't have a UD. But if you get an ID token, right? Because we got two tokens, ID token for open ID connect and access token uh, for accessing, right? The, um, our API, right? So we can use the client ID. So just copy the client ID and let's go ahead and paste it in uh, audience. All right. So just make sure everything looks good. And now we can uh, click create and attach, right? So now it's available. We created authorization. So now if we're going to go and check the post endpoint, it should refuse, right? So let's go ahead and try it. So now let's go ahead, try posts endpoint. And it shows the message unauthorized. However, we should be able to see the post number five, right? Yeah, because it's not protected by the authorizer, right? So but basically we would want to or protect that route as well with authorizer. All right, now we basically need to try and see if we can get access to the posts using the token. For that, we're going to go back to uh, Visual Studio Code. All right, so in a Visual Studio Code, we create a new get route, right, to the posts. And now it's going to go to API Gateway URL, right? And we have the authorization. And what we need to put, we need to put bearer. And we can post the token, right? That we copy. We can copy this again and uh, put the access token. All right, so now let's go ahead and try it. And as you can see, now the endpoint is working, right? It's giving us all the posts, right? So if you don't, we don't have token, right? If we delete the token or put something bare in there, right? So if we click here, it's going to respond that unauthorized, right? But if we put the token back, right? And now if we hit the route again, we can see that we get uh, the response. And this is how you protect a uh, route with a JWT token in HTTP API gateway uh, using Cognito. Uh, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.